Hello class, uh, this video is for tutorial number 6, ENGR380. In this tutorial, you will learn how to model a involute profile spur gear using SOLIDWORKS. Here is the parameter used in this tutorial, diametric pitch, number of T's, and a pressure angle. Uh, I will mostly follow the procedure listed in the tutorial. Uh, but I will slightly uh, change that to a more advanced level. Basically, I'm going to use the equation to drive the um, drive the modeling of this uh, gear. Essentially, at the end, you can update the diametric pitch and number of teeth if you want a different gear. Okay, so that you don't have to go through the process anymore. Okay, so you can actually probably use that in your project, in the course project, in the later part. Okay, so let's get started. So first, create a new part. So first step is we're gonna uh, sketch a circle, uh, which is basically our addendum circle. The addendum circle uh, is the uh, outer edge. So let's dimension this circle in here. Okay, so just leave the circle as it is. The radius. Uh, there, notice there's a D1 and a sketch one. That's the radius of the dimension there. So, but we're gonna uh, change this, drive that using an equation, okay? Yeah, so go to tools and then equations. So here we're gonna add a few things here first diametral pitch, then number of vertices. Pressure angle. So the let's here choose deep sorry uh, choose degree. Okay. So. And then uh, we will need a few more parameters as you as we as you recall in the lecture we learned. Uh, we'll we'll enter this addendum and dedendum in there. Okay, so addendum is the difference between the addendum circle diameter and the pitch diameter. Dedendum is the difference between the pitch diameter, pitch circle diameter, and the dedendum circle diameter. So that's a a is addendum. That's one over capital P. Then B is the D then that's 1.25 over capital P. So we might need the clearance there. That's B minus A. That's clearance. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so <coughs> what else do we need? Uh, we are also gonna uh, need this uh, diameter, uh, the pitch diameter DP. So pitch diameter DP is N over capital P. So this is the pitch, basically pitch circle diameter. So, and then the next one is the uh, base circle diameter DB. DB is related to DP by cosine DP times cosine phi. Okay, so that's space circle diameter. Okay, so I guess well, that's in, that's enough so far. And now go to this equation here. Click on the equation first. Okay, and then okay, move your cursor here and then click on this this dimension there. So in this equation, we're gonna uh, that's the dendum. That's a dendum circle. Dendum circle is a DP plus 2 times A. Okay, so that's a dendum circle. Okay, so that should be all right so far. Enough for now. Okay, so double click that. Okay, so it can toggle between expression now for the dimension and uh, the actual ones update. Okay, yeah. And exit, check mark. Okay, do an extruded extrusion based on this circle. So let's go to the other way. Uh, give a, a face face, one inch should be enough. Okay, so that's face width. 
Okay, so that's the gear body. All right. So now the next is we're gonna create a few more circles on this surface here, and which is the front plane, right? So let's look at the front plane, and let's do a few more circles here. First circle is the peach circle. Second circle is <coughs> the base circle. Third circle is the Dedenum circle. So then let's dimension all of them here. Okay, so just check mark for all of them. So we're gonna use the equation to drive all of them. Okay. Okay. Okay, so now let's go to our equation. <coughs> Okay, so uh, after first usage of the equation, now we have this icon equation in here. So click on it, right click, manage the equation. Okay, so first is this uh, pitch circle. So here, go to this cursor here, click on the pitch circle. That just equal to dp, right? Yeah. So that's pitch circle diameter. And then we go to our base circle and base circle is db which is what we already calculated so that's just the db okay and the last one is going to be the uh, ddenum circle ddenum circle is dp minus 2 times b so that's ddenum Okay, so that should be alright. Okay, so yeah, let's update. It. Click this button here to rebuild everything that's updated. Alright, so now we need to go back to the sketch here okay, to draw the involute curve. Now, involute curve, as, is, as indicated in the lecture, in the in lecture, also in this tutorial, uh, they are uh, they are um, uh, basically represented by using by this parametric equation. Uh, we're going to draw basically two involute curves. Uh, one is, we're going to draw basically like one is this portion and the other is this portion. Okay? So this portion A, right, is represented by this parametric equation. This portion C, which has angle beta in between, is represented by uh, this parametric equation here. The R is essentially the radius of the base circle, okay, and T is a time varying parameter. Okay, so <coughs> uh, we'll deal with this beta angle here. That has to be calculated uh, properly. So, but let's create this uh, uh, involute curve uh, uh, starting from this location A here using this parametric equation. Uh, I have uh, entered you know part of this uh, parametric equation using notepad here. So notice that this portion here, that's not R, right? But this this one here. So what this is basically, I don't want to enter a constant R here. I want to use a uh, parameter-driven uh, radius R here. So unfortunately for SOLIDWORKS, the equation-driven curves, you cannot use global variable in this equation-driven curve. You can only use, okay, uh, you can only use a dimension here to drive this number. So the, the, the dimension in here I use is basically the dimension for the base circle diameter. This is the dimension of the base circle diameter. And divide by 2, that will be the radius, right? So let's use this to create the first involute. Uh, <coughs> go to the sketch. Okay, we're in a sketch now. Uh, click on this equation driven curve. If you don't have this icon here, you can go to tools. Uh, you can go to tools. Okay. And then sketch entity, so tools, sketch entity, and then equation driven curve. Okay, so here, that's fine. So now I'm going to click here, choose parametric, first one here, copy paste. Okay, so you can enter by hand. Oh, there we go. So we're going to start from zero, that's basically starting from the A location. Give a value 6.8, okay, 6.8 here. So that's there, there we go, that's part of the involute there, so click yes, good. Okay, so that's our involute here, right, yeah. 
now we're going to uh, draw a line here, connect to this point. Okay, yeah. So uh, this is horizontal apparently. And then we're going to draw another one here. Okay, let's draw a center line. So, yeah, center line. Make sure the center line snap to the uh, addendum circle at here. Okay, so snap on it. Yeah, this is kind of a tricky. If you don't snap on it, it might cause some problem uh, later when we changing the number of T's in the diametral pitch, stuff like that. Okay, so then uh, dimension the angle between okay between this uh, these two lines here. Okay. okay, so this currently, so we're gonna constrain this angle here. So the question is. Uh, how much shall we constrain this angle here? So let's go to our tutorial notes set here. Okay. There's a, a drawing of the geometry for uh, based on two adjacent two set here. So this is a pitch circle. This is the base circle, and this is the concentric uh, or uh, center okay, for all the circles. Um, <coughs> and here is the number of teeth. So if you have an n number of teeth, then the angle corresponding to one circular pitch, this is a circular pitch here, right? Circular pitch is defined as the, the arc length from uh, the point at here to the adjacent point along the pitch circle. So this angle here, basically this whole angle here, is going to be 360 degree divided by n, okay, because there are n number of teeth. Okay, and number instances. So this is the uh, 365 in. Then and then the other thing is the width of the width of a space. This is the width of a space is the same as the tooth thickness. Okay, so that means uh, this portion of angle is or this portion of angle is the same as this, which is 360 divided by 2m. Now if I draw a center line here and here, so the basic line will have a four even. Right uh, values by uh, angles at here, okay, for even ones, and that's basically. If you look at this portion here, this red line here is the connection, the radial line between this point to the origin to the center, and this is the uh, center line here, and that's basically this one and uh, this center line here, right? Yeah. Okay. So the point is, what will be the angle between this red line and the center line at here? So that will be the angle would be. 360 degree divided by 4n, right? This angle or this one here, okay? Minus this little angle alpha at here. So this alpha angle at here, okay? Uh, it can be obtained through a ge geometry here. So I didn't include the detail in the tutorial for the alpha here. So if you're interested, you can come to my office. I'll show you how the alpha is obtained. But overall, the alpha is I'll pretend as this. This is the expression for alpha here, all right? Yeah. So the alpha angle is basically the angle between this dashed line and this red line at here. Okay. So that means uh, we need to dimension okay, uh, this angle here okay, uh, as 360 degree divided by 4n minus alpha here, all right? So let's go back to our uh, to our drawing in here, okay, go to our equation, okay. So let's first let's define our alpha, okay. Define our alpha here, and I already had alpha entered in here, so I'm gonna basically copy paste alpha, okay. Yeah. So you might notice that there is a mult multiply by 180 divided by pi in here. So what this is basically. Um, it's basically this. This is this portion here. Default is reading, so I'm gonna change that to degree because the phi is 20 degrees. So either way, you know, basically we want a degree here, and so then here change the degree minus 20 degree, and uh, that's what this is, right? That's what this is. Okay, that's what this is. So that's alpha here. Then now I'm ready to dimension this one in here. This is D4. And uh, what do we see about that? That's 360 divided by 4 times N. And then minus the alpha there. 
okay there we go so that's that uh, dimension over there okay so click OK okay so uh, double click that so let's update that okay so 4.15 so that's good okay yeah now the next thing is we need to create that uh, the involute starting from here okay and the angle between the C and A here is beta so basically the angle in here which is, which is what which is uh, twice the beta is uh, twice as much as this portion here right is this just and uh, the the two involute is this two right here okay so in other words the starting location of that here right here is twice as much as this angle at here. Now, parametric equation wise, okay, your uh, location starting the C here is this one here as indicated here. So that uh, beta angle should be in there here. So it, uh, essentially, basically, what happens is you change the t t t t t at here into negative t negative negative t. Okay, and because the starting the starting location is here with the beta, so that's why we minus beta, minus beta, minus beta, minus beta. Okay, yeah. So here's my inner uh, expression. Here's my expression for um, for the x and y here. Okay, uh, for x here is this. Okay, so as you can see uh, here, there's a two times this one in here. So that's basically uh, two times the dimension that gives me the beta here, and then I convert the value into read into reading, okay? Because in equation-driven curve parametric equation, the requirement is you you can only use reading for cosine and cosine and sine. Okay? So here is that uh, x here. So let's go here. So enter. Uh, click on equation-driven equation curve parametric okay and uh, go to the other one there click that all right so that's same thing there 0 0.68 okay so there we go that's our uh, other part of the involute curve okay so then I'll do the similar thing here I'm gonna connect here to here right yeah Okay, so then we're gonna dimension this and that okay, as it is. Okay, so this dimension here, we we are going to uh, also use the equation to drive this angle at here. Okay, yeah. So, uh, and uh, sorry, now this one here, the equation. Go to here equation, manage equation. Okay, so in this bunch, add the equation here, add this dimension in here. So that dimension is going to be the same as d. This d five, same as d four. So this is three sixty divided by four times n minus alpha here. All right. Okay. So okay. So there we go. So we got this uh, nailed in here now. So now let's um, uh, let's temporary exit it here. Okay, temporary exit, and uh, uh, we can try to change this number set here. Let's see if that's going to be automatically updated. If I change 36, okay. So you can see it's automatically updated here, right? Okay, so. I'm going to go back here and change back to 18. Okay. All right. So uh, now we're going to do a little house cleaning in here uh, to trim off some of the curves and uh, ready for the next step. Okay. So first four, uh, let's turn these two curves, these two circle into uh, construction lines. Okay. And then let's uh, trim off here. Okay. So let's trim this off and trim that off there and trim this off. There we go. Okay. 
uh, before we exit it here so we uh, uh, we're gonna do one more thing in here and we're gonna add a relationship or constraint in here right so cl click on this little segment of a line in here and then press control click on this origin in here okay and then click on coincidence okay yeah so basically we'll make sure this little segment here okay is going to the the extension of this segment is going to intersect always intersect this origin out of here okay so that's kind of critical because uh, I had some uh, problem uh, um, when I was updating in a P in or P later but uh, uh, with this one we'll solve the problem so okay so that should be all right now so then let's exit here okay now let's do a little extruded cut okay based on the sketch okay so we're gonna cut it based on this sketch right here okay so cut it through them all okay there we go okay so that's a nice and neat cut and then um, we will um, so let's do let's uh, putting a fillet at these two edges right here okay so before we do a fillet yeah let's okay let's do a full fillet here okay fillet this one and this one in here okay the fillet radius should be smaller than the uh, clearance right so right now the clearance is sitting at uh, uh, 0.125, so that's okay. So uh, let's click now, okay, there's a clearance there. Uh, last step is to do a circular pattern, okay. So we're going to circular pattern around this surface here. We're well, not just a fillet, but also this extruded cut. Okay, so that's it. Okay, there we go. So that is the gear okay, based on the given um, values. All right, so now we can try. Let's see now if I uh, gonna have a different, uh, let's see parameters. If I choose probably six out of here. Okay, so all the calculation is updated and then click OK. Uh, so you will have updated this one here. Uh, so the only trick in here, so you see, you might need to up. Sometimes you might need to update this fillet radius, okay, manually out of here. Fillet radius, okay, just in case uh, if the if the fillet radius appear to be too big. Okay, so if I change this number of T's out of here, so maybe I'll change that to 36. Okay, so okay, so 36. Yeah, so it looks funny though, but. Uh, remember this circular pattern here should also be changed accordingly here okay because the region is 20 so we need to change that to 36 okay okay so there we go that's 36 uh, the fillet radius you see the C is the point 0 0.04 so the fillet here uh, should should be updated slightly here okay, so let's see maybe use a 0 0.5 0 0.05 Okay, that's that's about it. And uh, so those are nice and neat uh, uh, curves. Okay, so if uh, actually compile compa compared the results of here with the prof um, um, a commercial software called Gear Tracks, so the the profiles and uh, everything looks very uh, very much the same thing. Okay, yeah. So. Uh, that's the end of this tutorial and uh, if you got a questions uh, please let me know okay so it's it's gonna be a good exercise and I will try to create another video uh, to show you how to properly mate a gear and a pinion okay so this is basically part of the course projects and uh, which is the modeling part right so you can uh, if you can done this properly then uh, you uh, have done a portion of the projects already. All right, thank you.